on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Thursday, March 30th, Galaxy getting ready to face off against the Seattle Sounders. Uh, that's going to be an interesting game. We're going to have a whole bunch to talk about on that for sure. We got some little odds and ends in here as well. Uh, a little hearing from Greg Vaney and what he had to say at training today. We'll get you updated on Douglas Costa. Is he going somewhere? Greg Vaney throwing really, 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 really cold water on that. My my uh, my my conspiracy theory out the out the window there. Um, talk about Chicharito. A whole bunch of things get you ready for that Seattle game. In order to help me do that, glad to have him back. It's Eric the Portuguese Hammer Vieira. Eric, what's happening, bud? Uh, not too much. Just preparing to head out to Los Angeles for the weekend. Uh, un- unfortunately, not for the Galaxy game, but I have other plans and other things going on. But excited to be back in Southern California. Be bummed I'll miss the Galaxy game, but I'll be in the vicinity. Hopefully, good vibes will all kind of commence all the way around. That, How are you doing, sir? Uh, we, I, I, I think I'm okay. I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm super busy, all that stuff. But I, I, before the internet completely crashes, because I fully expect <laughs> it to still, I want to tell you, new modem has been here. It's here. Okay. All right, we have we have increased bandwidth by a whole bunch. So we're hoping that as the the overall network in my neighborhood gets congested, which seems to be the issue around 8, 820, 830, 840, that 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 there's enough bandwidth to sustain us in those periods. Okay. I will say it right now before it all goes crazy too. If for some reason something goes sideways, go listen to the podcast on on the podcast listener. You'll get the full one. It won't be like screwy or anything like that. You won't miss the little words here and there, but we have, we're, we're really hoping we're really hoping yeah. we have, we so, have some so awesome f- listeners that, that have been helping out. So yes. Yeah. So far so good. Feels clean. Videos coming in clean. I, I just feel like in the year 2023 of our Lord that, you know, congestion, you know, the kids are still on the, you're on your iPads, get off the iPad so we can have it, good. That's still a thing. It's, now. it's, 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 it's like back in the day, right? It's like back in the day whenever your yeah. mom would pick up the phone when you're on AOL and it would be <laughs> mom, I'm in hang a on. chat room, mom. I'm online right now, mom. Uh, <laughs> what was the name of the chat Talking room? Talking to a hot babe. I'm almost certain of it. Um, probably. Um, <laughs> that was back before there was catfishing, right? Right. Yeah. Um, what was the name of the chat room in AOL that like you went into all the time? Not to start this off. I'm trying to remember what the name of, like it was teens something like it was something there like was a, definitely a, t- a teen, teen chat right yeah, yeah there was and like I a definitely teen went in there before i was a teen yeah oh. that's for sure <laughs> you're lying you're lying to the system yeah. i want you yeah, to know that, that i like it came around when i was a teen so i was fine it, it, like dr- that's when it got popular i was a teen so it worked yeah. for me the the internet broke me for sure so yeah, yeah. okay it's, it's i am the broken man i am today because of the internet oh. you know Coming around right, right, right at the right place, right time, or wrong place, right time. However, you ever you want to throw it out there. Yeah, everybody's like, "Oh, AIM! It's the AOL Instant Messenger." Everybody remembers no. that, right? No, a- AOL. AIM was a whole different. I, I mean, thought, AIM no, it was, was its own. It was I, built in. Yes, but it then was there a, was AIM outside of it. That, right. 
there was like AOL with the homepage. I, I'm right. dating myself on yes. how old okay. I am, but yeah. Did you ever have one of the CDs that gave you 250 <laughs> 20, free <yeah>. hours? <laughs> 250 hours of free AOL, yeah. I Good mean, times. It, it's crazy how that sort of started in, in the we're going to charge you by the hour to be online. And then yeah. like you were like worried about how long you were online. And then eventually got to be like, well, we're just going to charge you for the month. That makes some yeah. sense. So uh, how does AOL drop the ball on that, by the way? They had like the head start on everybody. <laughs> yeah. and then, well, It's like Zoom right? or, or Skype, right? Skype, or yeah. Skype. Yeah, Skype blew a 3-1 lead in the finals. Yeah, same thing with AOL. All yeah, right. they could have been our proprietary internet, but here we are. As as of course we are we are going through this, we want to hear what chat rooms you were in. Only the only the PG-13 ones are allowed. None of the R and 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 X-rated ones. I'm sure that you didn't get to as a teenager. Um in there. Uh yeah, AIM was a product of AOL, Eric. I just want to make sure that you know that because I felt well, like yeah, I felt I'm not criticized. Saying... I felt like you didn't well, understand. Okay, so I I hope that's not coming across that I didn't know that AIM was a part of it. I'm just saying that there are people who grew up with AIM being like a separate thing. Right. But obviously an AOL product, but again, we're off course oh, to the funny. LA galaxy. Yeah. That, you know, what about them? What chat room would they be in right now? Um, <laughs> uh, no, we're times. not doing that. Uh, I just, a uh, uh, shout out, uh, uh, Steve from AFJA is going to join us at about eight 30, uh, talk about his group, talk about the pupusas. We'll tell you where to find them. All that fun stuff coming up for a home game on uh, Saturday against Seattle Sounders. Of course, it has to be like early in the afternoon. Like this is the second time now that the LA Galaxy have played in second game in a row that they played technically the first games. Uh, Portland was actually the first and only game at like 1.30. Uh, this one, there's a couple different games that kick off at 4.30. So uh, a little earlier than, than normal, I think, kickoff time. I think there's a bunch of things going on around the stadium and stuff like that. WrestleMania is in town. Everybody knows that. The Dodgers are playing. I, I was going to say yes. I, I but op- opening weekend right. Right, for the Dodgers. Dodgers they opening weekend. That'll be on, right? Um, and then you you obviously you have boycott stuff going on as well. So what will it look like in the stadium? Very interested to find out and, and certainly do the whole thing. Uh, Philip uh, gave us a $2 super chat. What was this, Eric? Look at that. Look at the message. This was like an AOL thing. Yeah. Do you remember? It's what? ASL. It's age, sex, location. Oh, that's what it was. I yeah, couldn't remember yeah, what it yeah. was. How old are you? Yeah. Yeah. Age, sex, <laughs> that's your gender. That's right. I mean, that this would be interesting in, in 2023 where this goes. Yeah. Yeah. And then your location, of yeah. course. Do you, do you want to find something? You want to hear something hysterical? Uh, people yes. are saying, you know, what, what screen names, like what screen name did you, do you know what, remember what your AOL screen name was? I, I do. I, I, I was easy E09. Very nice. Uh, I would like to tell you how much of a nerd I am. I still have basically the same one. It's J G O O S S, which is okay, which is like you know J Goose, which was the goose. yeah the goose, right? That's yeah. that, that's how I went. So, um, very good. Yeah, American Sign Language as well. Very good. Um, what what did you think of uh, of last weekend's performance? Because you and I both had to watch yeah. it afterward, right? So we what had, did what did you think? Yeah, we had a similar situation. My my son had his birthday party, of course right at game time. That was the early game uh, for the LA galaxy. So I was at a Lego party, you know, building towers. Of course so I was on, you know, of course, which took precedent. Was there so a kid, was, was a, there a kid in FC Dallas, uh, Jersey was, with him? Know, okay. I'm in FC Dallas territory. So of course there's a lot of kids in the academies around here, popular, popular club, but, um, the, the game itself, I was kind of in the same situation. We were joking around this. We knew it was a zero zero game and then we were going to torture ourselves to go back and watch it. But when I went back and watch it, I feel like they played better than the result indicated. I thought, well, 0-0 zero, zero draw away at Portland with all those injuries. This must have been a snooze fest. You know, the Galaxy couldn't get it together. But then uh, upon watching it, it's like, no, they actually looked really dangerous in that opening half. They had, you know, chances. They hit the post a couple times. And it's like, okay, the Galaxy seems to be putting things together. And the interesting thing about that, I feel like it makes it even more frustrating that they couldn't nab three points because I feel like when you're outplayed and you can't hang with the competition and you know, you just don't have it on that day. If you lose or you draw, it's like, it is what it is. There are days like that where you just have to take the L and you move on. But when you look like you can have the chances, the other team is depleted. This is a chance to steal three points, get your first one of the season. That's almost, it's almost worse. So that's why it's kind of that theory that, you know, second place hurts more than third place because you're right there and you lose out on it as opposed to, you know, just being happy to make the podium. So it's just, it's just one of those things where it's, it's frustrating because, you know, my eyes told me I saw a better LA galaxy product than I've seen in previous games, right. uh, obviously early, early on in the season, but the results, you know, you, you, and I, I made this joke that I'm putting all my energy into the 2024 LA Galaxy because it's like, is this season a wash already? You know, with all the injuries and the the sanctions that are happening mid season, like, do I just do throw my hands up in the air this season? And you know, we have a lot of youth, have the youth work through the kinks, and then 2024 is our year. But you know, you were you kind of walked me off that ledge that 
it's MLS with nine playoff teams. You just have to get hot, you know, peak at the right time. I have to take my own advice there. So it's just one of those things where I, I my, my brain says this, this is not going to be the year if this is how the Galaxy are going to be playing. Right. But at the same token, anything could happen. So it's just kind of interesting how the game went. My eyes tell me a different story than what the, the result was of the final game. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree that. I, I agree with that. I mean, it was it was fair. The Galaxy couldn't finish. It's not like you, you thought that, you know, yes, Brugman's shot was a very good shot. It got it saved by by Bingham. That was that was all very good things. You're like, okay, uh, Preston Judd hit the post. Memo Rodriguez hit the post. Like, you see those things, and you're like, okay, they're so close. But it never really felt that close of them actually scoring but I did feel like they dominated possession. I felt like they totally broke up Portland's ability to break out and break out quickly and to be dangerous in those. And I do think their spot mob has the momentum um, shift. And I think that's sort of a better judge of this game than possession because the Galaxy hold possession for forever. Um, and then Portland would get you know a, semi, a half chance going the other direction. Portland had a lot of those half chances, especially as the second half sort of wore on. You're sort of like they're building into this game that's not good. Um, but I thought the first half was a was a really dominant performance by the Galaxy, and and I think if they can do something similar, they have a chance to get a result against Seattle. I don't think, and you know, just to even start before we even talk about Seattle, but I don't believe that Seattle is. Listen, I thought their better game was against LAFC uh, the weekend before this last weekend, where they were zero zero. I thought that was a really good game by them. I they looked yeah. they looked really sharp in that game. Um, the SKC game, the SKC is a is is adorable right now because they're 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 totally toothless <laughs> which and, yeah which makes it frustrating because the galaxy couldn't do it against you know uh, skc so it's just one of those things by transitive property but yeah obviously I, i'm with you that seattle has looked better but they just they just dog walked skc oh, yeah uh, in that game and that's why i think everyone is rightfully a little bit nervous about this weekend because it feels like big bad seattle is going to come to town well um you know, I, I think the the SKC thing's really interesting because you're watching Peter Vermees, who just got a contract extension and all this stuff. And realistically, his job should be on the line. But you're talking about a guy who runs everything there. There's not anything that happens that Peter Vermees doesn't know about. And granted, I think he's an excellent you know, sort of model. If you're going to have a single guy who does everything, he's really does a good job of finding smart people, surrounding himself with smart people. And then they own this part of things and he can focus on what he needs to focus on. Um, What's that like? Yeah. (laughs) Maybe we're getting closer. I don't know. I I mean, I talked about it on Monday and I've told you, you know, Baxter who's out on assignment. I don't, again, I don't know if I'm allowed to say where he, where he was, but it took him 26 hours to travel there. Um, Is he, is he at the Lego store? He he is at the Lego store. How'd you know? That's the very good. No. Sorry, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to reveal it. Here. Yeah, I know. Um, so it, it, you know, you sort of look at this and you're like, okay, you know, I I understand, you know, you know where where that sort of that whole like Kevin was sort of saying like there's zero chance that that somebody like Will Koontz came over and, and doesn't know what his job is, right? I mean, that's that's impossible. That's a guy doesn't be quit the number two and then's like, what's my job title now? Like that doesn't yeah, happen. I, I think and you summed it up well with someone with was his ambition and someone with his kind of, you know, aura around him right now, kind of a hot commodity. It doesn't feel like that'd be the case. But I also kind of go back to that, you know, best player available mentality as well, that if, you know, he's leaving his post at, at this club, he's regarded as one of the best number twos in the league. And you just say, we're having a little bit of tournament. Let's get this guy in our organization. We don't even have a title for you, but let's just get you over here. I can, I can almost see that being a thing, but 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 just to go back to the lack of communication and transparency with the Galaxy, and it puts them in the situation that they're in right now w- with the supporters. You know, it could be very. They've they've painted themselves in a corner because I think with the client situation and not making announcement, we don't make announcements or press releases on executives. Well, now you have this new executive. If you make a press release, well, do you make press releases on executives if you're going to make an announcement about them? So now you just you force yourself into being quiet and this being news you know, released through other outlets. So it's just kind of interesting on how they're going to do it. You know, I'm curious to see how they're going to split it up. I know I I like Kevin's theory or or his idea of having co-presidents, a soccer president, and then a business president. That makes sense to me. And I don't know if that's going to be, you know, an olive branch that's big enough to to get everyone back on board. But to me, it feels like that's that's a step in the right direction and getting someone like that who's going to be able to I don't know if we talked about it last week or, or or earlier when I was on, but it just seems like this is the type of guy who you need in your organization to kind of the way that the Galaxy signings have gone recently and the, right. with the rumors with cost and everything going on. This is the type of guy you need in your organization right now. So it feels like it, it's it's a good hire, but just all the circumstances around it are just so muddy and so murky. 
Yeah, and love some clarity out of uh, out of anything and in and anyone. Well, uh, really interesting stuff, sort of in, in terms of what's going to happen this weekend. I, it really, you know, I think it's a good test. It's a good sort of measuring stick, and and I think that's important to sort of look at. I want to get through some uh, some LA Galaxy posts and just some things. Uh, I saw this and I forgot to post it, but basically it was uh, you know Preston Judd basically from watching the LA Galaxy as a little boy to getting a chance to play with them. Dreams do come true. It's fun, Eric. We've been watching this league long enough. You didn't see these posts. Uh, way back yeah. when we started, right? Because they weren't watching. A it wasn't league. a thing. It, it wasn't league the, whenever they started. The, the the closest was, you know, someone going to a World Cup and then you know, and and watching you know the Galaxy. So again, not that it was that far off, but yeah. Now we're seeing. You've seen it with Jalen Neal. You've seen it with Preston Judd. People who are growing up as fans, and you even saw it with um, Tyler Boyd mentioning it uh, on Apple TV. Yep. They had that one on one with Joe Totino. He talked about coming to games as a kid. He even went and game a game in Wellington. Uh, when when he was in New Zealand, so you know you, you're starting to see kind of the the benefits of players of this age who know the Galaxy, who grew up as fans, and now aspire to be part of this club. Which kind of brings us to where we are now. We have to think down the line of why it's so important that the Galaxy get back on track. Because right now, if you're in the Southern California market, you want thinking about who which team our kids going to gravitate towards. And if you're not that team now, 15. 20 years down the line, you're going to have different pictures of kids at different stadiums around Southern California. And you want, you want to have them on your side. You want to keep them, uh, you know, invested in your club to want to play for your club and to be those aspirations. So again, very cool story to see Preston Judd. I, I thought he looked dangerous. I was really hoping that he'd get on the score sheet, uh, you know, kind of a bummer because this, this may have been his, his one shining moment to try to, uh, to, to earn those minutes. Cause it looks like he's probably going to get, you know, sub minutes at best moving forward, but you know, cool story, but this is why, this is why everything that's going on around the club is going on because of situations like that. You want to be the big shining star, the big object at where, you know, people aspire to be a part of your organization. The, the good news is if you want to go visit the LA galaxy, if you want to start that, Hey, you want to bring your kids to it. There are like four or five different ticket deals going on right now. (laughs) A family um, deal, family yeah. deal. There's like a beer, beer pack, pack deal. Yeah. I forget. There's two other ones that somebody's keeping a list of them in the Discord, just so, so way everybody uh, knows which deals are out there. So, uh, plenty of ways to get in and see the LA Galaxy, especially for a little bit earlier in the afternoon. Um, you know, game that is uh, this coming up on Saturday. So, uh, just a reminder before we get too far, free on Apple TV and of course over the air on Fox as well. So, uh, plenty of ways. No complaining. Again, two you don't weekends have to do around. That dance. We'll we'll, comp- we'll get to the complaints eventually, but uh, not for now. The la- these last few weeks, you can't. But yeah. Uh, so anyway, so we'll see how uh, that goes. Let's get to Greg Vanny and what he said a little bit at his press conference before we get uh, Steve from AFCHA coming on here. Um, it, the the I love it. It started out hot and fresh. Uh, let's get to this because I called Damien just beforehand because on the audio that you're about to hear, I don't hear this particular thing. But Damien had audio that said, yes, absolutely. He does. Uh, 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 Damien said Vanny said Douglas Costa will be available this weekend and that Chicharito is making progress. Right. So if you saw a video released by the LA Galaxy and if I can get the video up tomorrow at some point of the press conference, you're not going to see this. I have a feeling it started a little late. Um, whenever they hit record, it was like the second question, not the first question type of thing. So um, this is this is good news. Douglas Costa coming in because you're going to hear Greg Vanny talk about Douglas Costa here in a second uh, and about all the good things that are going on and completely ruining Josh's tinfoil hat theory. I told you <laughs> it was a conspiracy theory. Uh, I just yeah. I just like the way it was all locked up. So here is Greg Vanny talking about Douglas Costa. And uh, the question was, there were lots of reports out of Brazil about him leaving. Is he is he leaving? And how true are those? And here it goes. He says, says nobody. No, I guess I lied. I, I guess I guess I completely lied. See, hmm. they, they corrupted the files. They corrupted the how, files. How they, does this always happen to me? Like I even you, checked this beforehand. This is, I was yeah, this is only going to gonna fuel the, the conspiracy theories even further uh, of what's happening. But while you, yes, go ahead. you need a vamp while you, while yeah, you pull go that ahead. up. Oh, yeah, so I, I'll say you, you got me hook, line and sinker with the conspiracy theory. Cause now rumors were going around on Twitter that, you know, Douglas Costa was going to be bought out. He made a post on Instagram and it was kind of funny. You, you sent it uh, to yeah, me, right? I'm going to tell the story that he, he he's walking into his own apartment. It's pretty much empty. And then he's, you know, taking a picture of him having dinner. I was like, Ooh, is this, is he back in Brazil? Is he, is he cleaning out his apartment? And then you you poured cold water. I mean, he said, um, that's what it's like when you don't have kids. Like you don't have just, you know, 
<laughs> Legos and wrestling figures. Yeah. But I was like, not even a coffee maker, a toaster. There's not one thing. Out. It seems very empty. They eat so outside. I, they eat out all the time, right? <laughs> they don't. They don't need all the dishes and stuff. They're probably renting that place, right? They didn't. They didn't buy it. Like the whole deal. All right, let's get to uh, Greg Vanny. I fixed it this time because you know you have to unmute the channel. That's how that works. Just letting you know. That's a professional audio quote. Here's Greg Vanny answering questions about Douglas Costa. Not true, and it's uh, yeah nonsense. He's getting ready to join us for the season, and he's motivated and uh, ready to go. So, what have been your conversations with him as he's been working his way back? Yeah, defenders? yeah, he's been great. I mean, he's he's dropped uh, weight. He's just, he's in the same fitness uh, like you know weight as he was when he was at Bayern, and he's so he's dropped that. He looks lean. He's been working on the fitness side of things. He looks quick. Uh, I think he has every motivation from our conversations to help the team be successful as we can be this year. And so um, that's what I see through his work rate. He's been in between the gym and the field. He's been doing everything that, that's been asked of him over the last, uh, you know, six weeks or so that we've gotten him back from this calf issue. And now it's just integrating him into the group and getting him uh, you know, back on the field and playing in matches. All right, there you go. A little. Uh, so, by the way, I would like to point out uh, the Greg Vanny hype train. Uh, in full effect, and I think people give Greg uh, stick for this, right? Where they talk, he talks about F rate. Yeah, he's in great shape. He's doing the whole thing. As a coach, you can control some of this stuff, right? You can say, "Hey, I need you to be in better shape. I need you to be, you know, more running. I need you to be all these things, like that type of thing." And then the player can be those things. And you're like, "You did everything that I asked of you. Now it's about performing on the field, though, right?" There's eventually there's a performance on the field. What Vanny is saying here is not that Douglas Costa is going to go out and perform on the field because that's up to Douglas, right? He's saying though that he's done everything that really we've asked of him, and he's put himself in a position to succeed. So yeah. that's it. So whenever he falls flat on his face, it's going to be like, he's got to do better, but he's put himself in the, in the proper, proper position. That's why I, th I thought the most interesting line in there is that he's back to his weight that he was at Bayern and Bayern is where he was, you know, he was kind of a, a star over there, you know, Juventus and Bayern were his, his best years. And so you say, <laughs> you know, to your point, he's saying he looks like the Bayern Douglas Costa, and now it's just up to him. Can he play like the Bayern Douglas Costa? And so it's one of those things. Will he get there? So um, it makes me feel a, a little uneasy. We, I, I feel like if if Costa is who we have available, given our current ringer winger situation, I'll take I'll take Put Douglas him. Costa. Put him you in. Know, it's it's better than what we have now because right now we don't have anything. So right. it doesn't mean we're happy about it. Obviously, if you're able to buy out and bring a better player in, that's ideal. But I just don't know. And, and you've mentioned this, that the rumors haven't been swirling who's available. I don't know that availability is, is going to be a good thing. Then the sanctions during the summer. I just don't know that we're going to have better options right now. And that's part of why, you know, my brain goes to throwing it all away for 2024, because I feel like Douglas Costa is going to be around and we're going to kind of roll the dice and see and see where we land with him. So it is what it is. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see if he can. You know, he can maybe still contribute a goal or two. Right. Is that good enough for a DP? Probably not. But, you know, th that's the situation we're in right now. This is You have to deal, uh, you know, play the teams that are in front of you and deal with the cards that you have in your deck. There was so much smoke on this. Let me just limit, like, if you went, if you saw a forest that was smoking this much, you would have sent the fire department because you were sure there was a fire in there. Right? <laughs> like, you're like, there's, there is, it's, it's, it's thick deep dark gray black smoke it's it's burning the tree you can tell it's burning the trees and then you get there and it's like all you know butterflies and and rainbows in there and you're like what where where'd the smoke come from it's really interesting i this is one of those i want to talk to greg vanny in like five years and ask him so what was going on with douglas costa whenever you yeah. guys like that whole <laughs> preseason well, it's, right it's going to be like the ronaldinho situation like the the stories will come out after we we were trying to ship him to gremio and we we had a deal in place and it fell through or you know so, so we're, yeah this is they one didn't of those want where, him either we're, we're not hearing the the 100 percent right. real truth of what's really going on right e super says does bayern want to take him back right i thought that was good i don't i don't, I don't think they do I, I i would guess no gremio is seem, sort of seems iffy on whether or not they want to take him yeah. back so um um, a lot of a lot of interesting ones. I hope Greg was calling my theories ridiculous that he had heard my theories and that they were ridiculous. <laughs> I I really I would love that. That would make me feel really good. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's that's sort of where it is. So I mean, now we're sort of in a position though. We're looking at who's coming back. So you should have um, in this particular case, you're going to have uh, Dayan Jovalich back. We've heard Chicharito not ready to be back yet. 
That clock he's, just keeps ticking, right? It's like, okay. He's posting pictures of him lifting weights. Looks like he's, dude, he's put on some muscle mass. Dude looks jacked. <laughs> Is that a good thing? I don't know. So, I feel so, like it's not. Does, it doesn't so, almost feel like, oh, I can't move my legs, so I'm just going to get like, it's arm day every day, like that yeah, type of thing, but it's not healthy. Yeah. It, it, I, I Here's where my, my pause for concern with that is when Chicharito had his 2020 year where he was just an absolute disaster. He had stuff going on at home and it just wasn't working on the field. We saw the redemption season from him where he was working out in the off season, posting videos of him, you know, running uphill both ways in the snow, carrying packs of tires on his back. And like he was hustling and working. You could tell he wanted to get back in form. Last season we saw a little bit of it, but it felt like he, he had accomplished it having a good season and maybe took the foot off the gas a little bit, but he was still, you know, pushing hard because I think he wanted to be uh, part of the national team to go to the World Cup. I think that was truly in his heart, in his goal. He really wanted that. He had that on his list. And I think that's why he put in the performances he, that he did last season and we got a good performance from him. This season, I don't know what his motivation is. Right. And the fact that he's missed, you know, the first, you know, four or five games of the season that's that's a red flag. That's a cause for concern. The fact that we're not seeing, you know, we're seeing more Twitch highlights about him talking about soccer and talking about the Mexican national team than talking about the Galaxy and working out and showing that he's going to be in game shape and get going. Um, the the caveat being, if he's injured, then you're not going to see videos of him, right? <laughs> you right. know, working out and taking shots on goal. Okay, right. the, duh. But we didn't see that that same build up, that same eye of the tiger that he had in that 2021 season, that's my cause for concern. If he's just, you know, bulking up up top and and worried about other things and doesn't have that same motivation to make a World Cup, I'm concerned that we're going to get, uh, you know, a, a really good season from Chicharito because right now it showed that they, they need a proven goal scorer and they just don't have. So they're really relying on him returning. But I, I'm really hesitant uh, on seeing what he's got when he comes back. I want to see how much is left in the tank. I'm a, I'm a little uneasy about it. And again, it's all going back 2024 LA galaxy. That's, that's where we're all, all roads point there. Have you ever seen like a seventies, a 70 year old, or let's say like 60 year old guy who's totally jacked, like just ripped. And you're sort of like, Oh, I kind of feel sorry for that dude. Right. Like a little bit. I feel like that's where <laughs> we're really. creeping. I mean, they, no. they got the testosterone going. Yeah. They're feeling good about themselves. They have the jet they, black hair. You know, yeah. they're like, they're like looking for wife number three. Right. That's like, <laughs> that's how it sort of feels. I don't know. I'm on wife too. I shouldn't really talk, but, uh, but you know, this dad bod physique over here, <laughs> I was having that, I was having that talk with my dad. Now I said, I said, don't you know, chicks nowadays, they're into this dad bod. He goes, says who? I'm like, these girls I follow on Instagram, it's, it's probably not real. You know what? That's that's <laughs> probably you know, good followers. That's probably rope you no, in. No, that's that probably doesn't work. Um, I wanted to get real quickly too, and then we're gonna uh, get to Steve from after as he he calls in. Um, I wanted to get to to uh, to. I'm gonna say this correctly. I got I got fact checked. Um, actually, really cool thing is that uh, Kevin uh, from the LA Galaxy uh, uh, PR department, right? The the uh, that he came out and he sent me a link, and it gave me a link to all of the LA Galaxy's pronunciations. Like they have the players say their own name, and it's all like a SoundCloud files and all this stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. But then he was trying to get me to do do uh, Julian Auda, I think Julian okay. Auda. Okay, so it's not Aude. Julian. Is, it's 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 Auda. Out, no, it's not. Alda. It's, yeah, Alda. Like Alda. Audi. Yeah. But yeah. Alda. Alda. Okay. Alda. That's I, that's how I think. We're, I'm waiting to hear him say it again and <laughs> get that on the thing. But he was trying to walk me through the finesse. So hopefully, um, I did a good job, Kevin, on that. But uh, Julian <laughs> apparently is got has his visa stuff all cleared. Um, basically, Greg Vanny saying just waiting now until uh, he gets his passport back and he can fly. He he says he could be on a plane tomorrow. He could be put on a plane Monday. Like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, like that type of thing. So he should be in and at least in training next week, possibly even available for the game the following weekend. Right. So that's good news because that's another piece to the puzzle that's sort of coming in. And if you've been following him around crazy enough, he is also on the list of possible players to go to the Italian national team. Now, he's an he's an he's on the Argentine national uh, youth national youth, team. Yeah, he's been part of their youth setup. Right. So that's sort of been there. But apparently, uh, Roberto Mancini is, is is trying to find everybody who has Italian heritage ever, and especially list. guys who are in South America. And 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 Julian is on that, which is kind of cool that he's being chased as a dual national from Argentina and Italy. So that's kind of yeah. a fun thing seeing. Yeah, this 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 is what you want. Those are the type of players that you want to have. Is when you have multiple national teams trying to to cap him and get them going. This is a good sign. It bodes well. 
uh, for what the Galaxy are going to be able to do. So I, I'm excited to see, you know, you know how he fits in with the team and to make it work. And I, I, I ask you to pull up some charts and some things on, you know, why why the Galaxy could use someone like him, uh, because you know right now. <laughs> Their, their outside backs are really giving up a lot of possession to the right. other team. That's really the weakness. And so I think Caligari coming in and looking the part, I think you, you talked about that he looks uh, you know, on, on Monday. And then I think Auda is <laughs> Auda. Al- see, Alda. now I'm in yeah. my own head. I know. It's okay. Is, I think we'll he's going to come in and kind of shore up that other side of the defense. So again, two clean sheets. Uh, you know, the defense has looked solid. They're doing their job. You, you know, you get the outside backs right. pushing forward and, and being a part of that offense. Get Chicharito back. Maybe, maybe we're cooking. Maybe it is the 2023 LA Galaxy that we're getting excited about. R- remind me whenever we're done with Steve, I want to talk to about uh, about the Argentina possibly hosting that U20 World Cup as well, because that sort of ties into to all of this as well. So uh, let's uh, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and not uh, with with much further ado. I want to welcome uh, Steve from AFTRA back to the uh, to the to the show. How you doing, Steve? How's it going, buddy? Doing well, doing well. How's everything going? Good to uh, connect with you guys again, Hammer and Josh. Yeah, always great to have you on. Um, you know, it was fun. We've been trying to do this for a little while. I'm glad it finally worked out and we were able to connect and all this stuff. I just, you know, I, you and I talk on a fairly regular basis, so I usually get kept up about pupusas and all the stuff that's going on with it. <laughs> Mostly it's the pupusas for me. That's, you know, that's really where my, my heart lies. But I love that whenever we whenever we pay for pupusas that it goes to, to some awesome stuff. So can you give just everybody sort of a, an, an update on... On what is you know what do the pupusas actually do and and why are you there at, at the stadium? Yeah, so you know this is something that was born at the Galaxy many years ago, uh, back when we were in the Rose Bowl. Pupusas at Galaxy games were a, a regular thing for for me and my family and friends. Whenever we'd go to games, you know that's part of the dishes that we would have uh, before going in, and it was really a no brainer for us uh, to use this dish as a fundraising tool to support the soccer academies that we have uh, across Central America and all the programs that we, we try to maintain uh, on a year-round basis. As you can imagine, it's, it's very cost-heavy. Uh, youth soccer is cost-heavy here in the States. It's a lot uh, less accessible around the world. So uh, we, we try to bridge that gap, and we do it by selling delicious food. I mean, I mean, it's not a horrible idea in, in terms of how that goes. But I mean, you know, it, it always uh, I always say that, like, you know, for people who love soccer or football, how, however you love to support it, there's there's nothing that I can find, I think, more rewarding than sort of being able to to donate to a program that gives kids that like gift of soccer. Um, and then the way it sort of ties in with the L.A. Galaxy all the time is is really interesting, too. Um, and so, like, I, I almost think that, you know, somewhere in El Salvador that you have all these little L.A. Galaxy fans running around because, you know, it, it, there's such a close tie between the two. Yeah, there's definitely representation of the club in Central America. I mean, we've gone uh, to Panama, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala with this organization, and, and each of those countries has a special... Uh, significance to the galaxy, you know, and, and especially in El Salvador where I, where I spend a lot of, of time, uh, you know, th- these are kids invested in the club, you know, they're aware of what's going on and through social media channels and for them to be able to see that representation and just to see a, a stadium full of people supporting them and, and, and the, their dreams is, is really something beyond my, my expectations really with when we first started this, it's, it's been really fun doing it. Yeah. Eric, you have a question? Yeah, so uh, Josh kind of stole where my oh, brain sorry. was going on on what you know <laughs> uh, you know it means to be Central American and LA Galaxy fan. But let's talk about Central American Heritage Night that's happening uh, at this game. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about kind of all the bells and whistles and the events that are going around? I know pupusas are part of it, but they're year, they're all year round. But I know there's going to be some special events going on um, you know, with the Central American Heritage Night. So can you tell us a little bit more about you know what what's planned for the, the game this weekend? Yeah, uh, we started working on on the planning for this uh, last year, uh, really, almost immediately after the last one in September. Um, Big shout out to John Malter and the fan engagement team for just getting out ahead of, uh, you know, the planning for all of this. And and we have a a pretty cool lineup. You know, we we were going to have a performance by Isote Ensemble, which is a quartet of classical music that's going to be playing a rendition of El Carbonero. Uh, Central American fans and, and, and people listening right now will, will be familiar with some of those tunes uh, before they, they lead the national anthem. 
Uh, there's going to be a visit from a, con the, a, a general, the general consul uh, or representatives from a consulates from Central America. Uh, I think the club's done a great job at sending out invitations to each of the countries from Central America so that that can have that representation there. And, you know, we, we are working with um, a couple different org other nonprofits to, you know, share share that platform so that people can, can support some of their missions. Like uh, Isote Ensemble has a uh, organization called um, Armonia Cuscatleca, which what they do is they, they teach kids classical, how to play classical instruments, and they do that by fundraising here in the States. So they'll be there, uh, as well as uh, Carecen and, and a, a uh, Eden Enamorado, who's worked um, with supporter groups in the past for a uh, street food vendor, uh, advocate advocacy and stuff like that so there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff and, and a lot of cool ways to just get involved and get to know the culture uh, as well as a, a really cool performance by uh, Los Malditos uh, playing uh, Cumbias Callejeras out in Connect the Plaza uh, which is where you'll find the, the pupusa truck so it's gonna be a, a, a good time a fun time and, and really uh, just continuing to grow upon uh, you know a, a Central American Heritage Night that we, we started really in the tailgate area with, with supporter groups and fans uh, back back in uh, 2019 was the first one. Yeah, it, it seems pretty cool that, uh, that that all this is going on. And, and I, you know, I know with uh, with certainly the current climate in the stadium and everything like that, it, like I always felt this is this is a place where your money goes and then it goes somewhere really good. Right. And, and I think, Steve, you and I have talked about this, that, you know, you guys are keeping that money um and 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 you're sending it off to these kids and that the LA Galaxy are donating the portion of the money that that normally would have gone to them as part of concession sales back uh, through the LA Galaxy Foundation to to go out to these guys is that did I sort of get the gist of that right yeah that's a very important point and something that I, I wanted to make sure to get out there that the club uh from the beginning of this uh Babusa truck uh social enterprise or venture uh has really been invested through the foundation to donate back their proceeds uh, that they would normally uh, take home from from a food truck, they donate that back through the foundation. Um, and you know, we're, we're really really uh, appreciative of the club and the foundation for supporting this mission from the beginning. Uh, I was going to say, if you're looking for the pupusa truck uh, at the game coming up on Saturday, uh, southeast corner, uh, so down through the plaza over onto the uh, southeast corner, uh, which is a place I, I love how they move you guys around. It's always like I, I have to find a you know a map of where you guys are, and you always do, you always do a good job of, uh, of of telling everybody where to find it. But I'm always like, wait, where did they go? Which which way do I have to go? It feels like I I know the truck's on wheels, but maybe they could keep you guys in one place for a little bit longer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it keeps it makes it keeps it interesting. It's it's always a, a we have like signage and we have a big pupusa flag and like you said those maps. A big shout out to uh, Eric from Eight One Three Design, another Galaxy fan that uh, supporter that you know helps us with those graphics and stuff. So it's definitely a a team effort over here. Very good. Is is there an appropriate way? Because Bob gave us a five dollar super chat that says, "Josh, do you eat pupusas with your hands or with a knife and fork?" Is there an appropriate <laughs> way to eat a pupusa? I know I use my hands oh, man. Uh, mostly because I was threatened at at basically knife point. What's crazy is though, <laughs> usually the sides that come with it, Steve, you have to use a fork. So like yes. I'm using a fork to eat my sides, but then I have to put it down to eat my pupusa. I'm just <laughs> saying it seems complicated. Yeah, I think that confusion with the with the sides and stuff is is fair. Uh, but I always tell people, you know, you do eat deep dish pizza with a fork, but a normal slice of pizza, if you saw somebody at, at Costco or something eating their slice of pizza with a fork and knife uh, very properly, you might make a face and, or, or have a reaction to that. And that's similar to the pupusas. Uh, they're definitely a, a feel-good food uh, that's intended to be eaten with your hands. But by all means, um, we, we poke fun at the whole fork thing. There, there's signage on the truck with the you know eye rolling emojis and stuff but it's all good in good clean fun it eat is. them however you like enjoy them enjoy them however you like we all know baxter uses a fork so that's was, all i'm uh, saying right? yeah i was gonna say you, you <laughs> just described my dad my dad is the guy who eats a cheeseburger and pizza with a fork and knife so yeah okay i'm, oh, I'm sure he'd be all over the pupusas <laughs> with a fork and knife that, that's very good yeah eric, eric do you have anything else for for steve no, I, I would just say, and you kind of hinted on it just with the climate and everything around the club right now, I'd encourage everyone to, to go follow AFJA, see what they're doing. There's a lot of other events that they hold besides just the pupusas and besides Central American Night. So I enjoy following you guys, seeing, you know, the, 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 you know, the programs that the, you have, the kids, the girls teams, you know, playing. I, I really enjoy following. So I just encourage everyone, given the situation, still go follow them, still find other ways to contribute because it's a great cause. And you see the hard work that they put in. 
uh, you know, and, and see where it's going. So I just, I don't have a question. Just enjoy okay. following you guys. Enjoy the work you do, Stephen, and just encourage everyone to kind of do the same. Uh, I, I had I had one one sort of thing is is what's what's like next what if if this grows the way that you continue to grow what what's your like sort of next step what's what's your pie in the sky sort of uh, you know thing that you'd like to accomplish through the foundation yeah you know that's that's where we find ourselves now uh, this is our fifth year as an official nonprofit organization and uh, we're at we're at a crossroads you know we're at a, at a place where we've established a community based soccer programs in these in these countries and have uh, created a, a steady form of sustainability right with with the food truck and other ideas to you know t-shirts and stuff like that um, and we're really starting to focus more on on the athletic scholarship angle and using the vehicle to get these kids a little bit more focused and thinking about college uh, we have one young lady who I, I, I absolutely need to mention her name is Fatima Racinos Chicas. She, you're going to hear about her, you know, either as an astronaut or astrophysicist or something cool coming out of rural San, uh, El Salvador. And she's the captain of our of our of our girls team. She's just such, such a bright mind. So we we've been able to provide her with the full ride scholarship throughout her high school, and she's getting ready to apply for uh, college. And she's going to be applying to, to schools here in the states uh, through through their soccer programs as well. So. Next steps is really just focusing on, on being able to support the next stage of, of development for these kids and then also develop a, 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 a way to do domestic programming. Uh, we do some stuff with local group homes where we bring them to their first uh, Galaxy Games mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and Levy Foods really helps us with giving, you know, giving them food vouchers and stuff like that. So just you know, having more, more of a presence here locally with, with uh, soccer drives and equipment drives and stuff like that, but a focus on education is next. Awesome. Hey, Steve, I appreciate it, buddy. Anytime you never need anything, you know where to find me, right? Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for sharing the, the space. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get these three points on Saturday for sure. All right. Thanks, there buddy. We'll see you soon. All right. Have a good one. All right. There you go. Steve with uh, AFTRA. Doing a great job, uh, as always. Like I said, if there's a place you want to put your money, that's a that's a pretty awesome well, place to do it. You know? Yeah. And, and he summed it up with that story of that girl he was describing. Like, you see it. You see the girls team, you see the ambition and what it, that that's what it's all about. And that's why, you know, you know, coming from a small immigrant community myself and that important of having like the consulate come out, like they're, they're doing it they're, they're, This is a, like, a, you can't understate how big of a deal it is, you know, to have that representation and to have that be part of your, you, you know, culture and your club and with soccer being such a huge piece of it, you know, I really, really can't speak highly enough of, of the work that they do. And so, you know, wishing them the best to go bigger and better each year yeah, as, I, it, as it goes on. Kevin was saying last time he was there, uh, they tried to comp him and he was like, no, 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 take my money because I know where it goes, right? Like it goes to a good thing. So yeah, I'm sort of the same way whenever I'm there as well. Um, they're great. Uh, wanted to go back and, and reel, reel back the chat a little bit because uh, we got busy and then I knew uh, Steve was coming on. So uh, exec executive producer Herb, as we call him, uh, the EPH, <laughs> uh, uh, $21.73 uh, super chat says, hey, Josh, hey, Hammer, just stopping by to hear my name on the podcast. Listeners, viewers, please hit that like button. I asked the please part because I just yeah. wanted but to. I, that's why I appreciate her reminding people to smash that like button. You know that, that he's doing his job. Twenty one seventy three. What right. does it mean? I don't you know. know. It, Every time, <laughs> I, I always have a fun time trying to figure those things out. But I appreciate you, Herb, always dropping by the chat. So big shout out to you. Yeah, I wanted to get to this super chat as well. Uh, Soul Echo said a five dollar super chat. It says, "What do you guys think about Stephen being a former LAFC fan? 30, 3252 memory. Got a check from them. Moved over to the LA Galaxy. So if I remember that story correctly, that's not how that story goes." Uh, the story was that there was a community uh, like program. It was an it was, award. Like, it was like within you, with each team, right? You select a group to to, to sponsor, to nominate. Yeah, yes. to nominate and go through the whole thing. And I remember this pretty clearly because I remember Angel City Brigade coming out and saying, "Listen, we know what you wanted. We know that you know you would like to vote for this person at the LA Galaxy. The LA Galaxy nominated as their team, but really you should be nominate. You should be voting for this guy over there." And so combined with the the two fan groups kind of almost combined in this way and and eventually, um, you know, after was selected as the winner of that and got a big check uh, for money, which, again, goes off to the to the good stuff. So, yeah, uh, back and forth. I have no issues with it. So um, yeah. and, and I'm, and to I'm me, fine the, with that. The proof, the proof is in the pudding. You see where, you know, where the community is being set up and where everyone is being supportive. You know, Stephen is a G and the, you know, after is a G's group for sure. Yeah. So the, anyone who doubts that. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, That's fine. I'm glad. You, I'm glad is. you brought it up. I'm glad. Hopefully, we could. We could. It's fair. It Hopefully, it clears yeah. up. Yeah. You're, you're right. 
So, um, all right, let's get to your charts because I want to get there. Um, what, what, tell me, tell me about this. Okay. <laughs> team style, it's team style comparison. Let me explain it to you as somebody who is, who is, doesn't know what Eric is trying to say. And I will explain it to you on the podcast. We have a chart. Uh, it's one of those like target charts. So basically, you know, you have up on the left hand side, it's direct speed in meters per second. Uh, and then over on the right hand side, uh, it's basically the same thing, uh, sort of moving towards like the fast and direct on the y-axis and on the x-axis it is slow and intricate um the la galaxy almost fall off this chart on the slow and <laughs> intricate side over yeah. on that side but above average in terms of speed so please tell, tell me what, that, what do you that, get from this that, that's why that's what i found the most interesting is that the galaxy are an outlier here uh, again yeah you mentioned the opposite ends, ends of the spectrum which is fast and direct and then the opposite end is slow and intricate and the galaxy don't live in either one of those they they're fast and intricate which is th that makes them an outlier. You look at the teams that are kind of at the center. You see your NYC, uh, your FC Cincinnati. They're almost like directly in the middle. And I think that's when you have the best balanced teams is those teams who are able to have that balance of being direct and then also w being direct when they need to be and then slowing the game down and ho holding possession uh, and kind of picking your moment. So I think where you want to live is towards the middle. And I think the closer you are to the, towards the middle probably will be sustained success throughout an MLS season. You look at the outliers, you have the team that are the fast, <laughs> the fastest and the directest. Right. Uh, you, you have your uh, Red Bulls, which I don't think that's a good thing either because this is coming from someone who criticized, you know, Guillermo Berescalotto for just lobbing crosses in. That's being just constantly lobbed. That's being direct, but I don't know that that gets you anywhere. And so I don't think that's a great end of the spectrum either. You see St. Louis is there on mm -hmm. the fast and direct side. So that's working for now. They're it's getting an, the breaks. It's an aberration. I don't it's an yeah, aberration. I don't believe over, it. Over the course of a season, I don't know that that's going to be the best uh, thing. So I think the reason I bring this up is just because the intricate piece with the galaxy showing possession, part of this is because I feel like it's it's justifying what, what we're seeing. They're having a lot of possession. They're passing it around, but they're not getting it into that final third. They're not getting in, into those zones to score the goals. They're not getting the finishing chances. And this chart shows that out of all of the teams, they are the least direct team. And so that's the thing that concerns me. They can benefit from being more direct. And again, that's coming from someone who criticized the team when they were too direct. But when you're not direct at all, that's a problem too. And part of that is with the injuries uh, to Chicharito. But, you know, potentially Dejan Jovovich was supposed to slide in there and, and should be a one-for-one -one or close to one-for-one -one swap, swap, and they haven't done that. Yeah. So it, I think this is also a product of the issue with the wingers. So I just wanted to bring it up because I thought it it's kind of confirming what we're seeing, right. that the Galaxy has that possession and they're kind of going around, but they're they're not getting in that final piece. And compared to the rest of the league, it really shows how bad they are about being, uh, you know, being direct. If they were just a little more direct, I feel like they would move significantly towards the center of this, of this yeah. graph, right? I mean, it, it sort of feels that way. I will say another team that is slow and intricate and not fast is the team they're playing coming up, which is the uh, Seattle Sounders, right? Because yeah. they are not necessarily direct. And if you watch them play, I think you can see some of that. Um, but they, they, they're, they're more on the, they're the next team that's closest on the slow and intricate side. So um, if we're talking about looking through that game, I th really feel this is a clash of styles and, and they're yeah. two similar styles and both teams like to have possession and both teams like to work the ball. And so who gets to have that ball whenever both teams want to do it? Right. Yeah, these are the two most intricate teams in the league that you're seeing so, going against each other. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Except Jordan Morris see. scored four goals in one game. The Galaxy have only scored two goals in all their <laughs> games playing. So I just want to say, you have another chart in here. I uh, wanted to just point it out. What do you got from yeah, this one? This one's just zones of control. The And again, you know, visual chart for an audio medium. Right. That's how it works. But just it just highlights the blue area is where the Galaxy are, have possession the most. The red area is where the opposition. So as you would expect, in front of the goal is where the Galaxy have possession and then the other team has possession. But the one that highlights, there's a big red <laughs> block on the whole right half of the defensive half. So that shows that right back has really been an issue Kelvin for the Lairdin. LA Galaxy. Kelvin Pushing Lairdin. forward, yeah, pull, pulling, pushing forward has been great, but on defense, right. uh, that's really where they've been struggling. And then, you know, w when you compare this chart, if you go to the website, at, you know, at, I believe it's the analyst uh, dot com. It's, they use the OptiJack stats um, compared to the rest of the league. This isn't really a bad thing, but the glaring part is the right back issue. And then the, the one other chart that I have there as well. Well, 
is the the bivariate, or I, if they had anything to add on this one. Right, right. No, I do just a little bit. So the whole red on the offensive zone is like right there. There's no real control, but there is control on the right side from basically. I have to imagine that's a lot of like Mark Delgado sliding into that outside space, or or Efrain Alvarez Efra sliding. In those first yeah, few games, yeah, for in sure. their first few games. But you can see that the Galaxy are oh, atrocious. In fact, they're worse than the league. I saw the stat. Worse than the league at crosses, and there's no control within the inside of the box from anything on that right hand side. The ball gets there to the right hand side. And then it dies every single well, time. That's exactly what we're saying. They're, they're not being direct. Right. And then the, the crosses are not going into the middle of the field. All right. Your final chart has uh, some uglier colors. I don't know. Purples and, <laughs> and like chartreuses and, yeah. and some sea greens and this some grays. Basically says the same thing. But the, the green is where the opposite, the, the opposition has control. Okay. So again, on the <laughs> attacking against our left back and attacking against our right back, that we're actually, we give up the most control so almost as much as in their goalkeeper box, they're in our side of the field as well on our right back side and on our left back side. And so that's exactly why we're hyping up Caligari and Aude, because that's this is the weakness that the Galaxy have shown through these opening games. Right. And that's exactly where you need these guys to plug in. And it just it really highlights the issues that the Galaxy have had in these first few games and why these players are going to be so crucial to getting things turned around if, they, if they're going to start getting some points. All right, so some uh, some interesting stuff going on there. Let's go to, um, uh, well, one, I wanted to update the, the U-20 World Cup. So basically, uh, with, with uh, Julian Aude, uh, he has been, apparently, he has been on that Argenti- Argentine U-20 team, right? And that U-20 team failed to qualify for the U-20 World Cup in January. But, Whenever Indonesia got stripped of the U20 World Cup, which is where Jalen Neal is going to go play for the U.S. Uh, youth National, or are they men's national, but U20s? I can never remember. There's U20s, like a switch. They're yeah. U20s. Um, whenever he goes possibly to play for the U20s, that's where he would go is Indonesia. Now it sounds like he and everybody else are headed to Argentina because Argentina was one of the few places that actually put up for the bid. So that means... Julian um, could be gone for the U20 World Cup as well because he'll get called into that yeah. that Argentine team. So uh, just keep that on your on your radar as things go uh, about. Uh, the other thing I'd say is that Sega Koulibaly was in training today but left early. Greg Vanny didn't know what was happening in terms of he saw that he slipped and he saw that he went in early but that he doesn't have any update on him because you wouldn't know. As soon as when guys get hurt, it's not like no. they immediately know what's wrong. They don't. Thought- they wait. Yeah, I thought when you said he left her, I thought he had like a dentist appointment or a haircut or yeah, something like that. He got a yeah. note from his mom, so he was, yeah. he was all good. It was, yeah, it was he's an going to WrestleMania. To yeah, yeah, he had an autograph session to go to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, but yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily expect Sega uh, to be available. Not that he has been available, but I could, would expect that he's probably will continue to not be available uh, for this particular game as well. Other than that, I think the LA Galaxy fairly healthy. Uh, Dan Jovalich coming back, right? So they'll have yeah, that. That's going to be huge. Caligari yeah. probably gets the reprise start over there on the right because there's zero reasons why I wouldn't start him again. Kid seems like he's yeah. ready to go and he needs the game time to figure out in, how to play with yeah. everybody, right? Yeah, he's in form and yeah, he had a, a solid start. So yeah, I don't, there's no reason that he's not the regular starter moving forward. Yeah, as far as I know, all the internationals are back. There are nobody, nobody else is out there that, that hasn't made it back. So I would expect that that is perfectly you know reasonable, acceptable that you would see everybody available that wasn't injured uh and uh they did check with fanny uh Dayon made it back from from uh international uninjured so he was fine no problems yeah. and so you you would expect Zav- to start him yeah and zavaletta played 90 minutes against the united states yep. so he's yep. obviously <laughs> you know he's ready to go whenever he's ready you know? to play if ne- if needed yeah that's right uh the el salvador gave the united states a little bit of a work out there um which is sort of expected under an interim head coach um so that's the stuff that we sort of got there. There, The other things I just sort of want to brush her off and just remind everybody, LA Galaxy home to Seattle, then away to Houston, then home to LAFC. That's April 16th. Uh, April 22nd, home to Austin, and then away to Orlando. That is your April schedule, and that's a tough road to haul there. Um, I'll say that when we look at May, it gets a little bit easier hosting Colorado, hosting San Jose, away to Columbus, not easy, away to D.C., not easy, short week. Um, and then home to Charlotte, okay, and then away to RSL. That May schedule, not impossible, not as hard as April, but there are more away games, so you you have to sort of balance that out uh, with everything. And we've gone over the standings many times before. The LA Galaxy not in any really position to to, to yeah. say much. Uh, Eastern Conference has New England at 12 points up there um, in the number one spot. Their last place team is Montreal with three points. Uh, if we go to do, 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 do Western conference, uh, St. Louis at the very top with 15, five wins on fire. They just, 
They, they, you can't stop passing him the ball. It's crazy. You can stop passing him the ball. <laughs> and uh, one of the, be- the best names, Joao Klaus. Dude, like they're just, just am, a perfect name. I am such a fan of that dude. Yeah. Right. I am. He's he's like kind, he's got a little Zlatan in him. Like just yeah. a little. He's like I, I told the quote, quote on Monday, but he's like he's like well either uh, my mother cries or your mother's cry your mother cries <laughs> and I hate it when my mother cries. Right. And it's like okay 10 four ten first sir, sir no problems. <laughs> Um, but just a really solid finisher, a lot of fun to watch. Um, so hopefully you get to watch some games. With the Galaxy game being early, you can still get home and watch some of the other games that are going on because I will say I didn't anticipate this as a problem. I'm watching a lot less Major League Soccer because all the games are on at the same time, and I usually am watching one game during that yeah, time. Yeah, th- that's that's a critique that's come out of the MLS 360 experience. While MLS 360 on the whole is good, and I, I think there are some tweaks that they could still make to make it a better product but with all the games kicking off at the same time and, and i think alexi lawless <laughs> threw this out as well and considered the source that he's not involved with the apple tv deal so maybe right. that's he he has an interest in complaining about it but having the games over the course of a day or over the course of a weekend there is something to that where you, you watch a couple games on saturday you watch a couple games on sunday when they're just all happening within a span of three hours it's it's there, there's the nice thing about it is you knock out all your MLS, you're, right. you're done. You're done th- that Good night. Yeah. But the other part of it is if you want to, you know, extend it and enjoy a sports weekend, I like having, you know, games on in the background all weekend long. That's you, you lose that part of it. Um, you know, so if, if your casuals are going to complain about not having access, it's not necessarily the access. It's the, breath of the games over the course of the weekend yeah. that that i do miss a little bit mike gray is giving he says he doesn't talk like drago of course he does everybody does that's the only accent i can do i just would like to point <laughs> that's that all out. you got that's you all got i one. got that's what he talk. that's what everybody sounds like um my my father talks like this to me okay so there you go <laughs> yeah, um, definitely not a brazilian accent no i don't think so um so anyway so uh so that's uh that's sort of coming this way um i, I guess one of the other things I just I just wanted to touch on um, is that there is a beta release of one of the iOS functions for Apple TV, right? So basically, there's a beta release. They're saying they're putting multi-view in, right? That there oh, is the okay. beta part of it is that you'll be able to pick four streams, up to four streams at once. So that's a multi-screen. You're able to look at each one of those threads. That means you can pick and make your own four box, which is my favorite thing to do. If you have a really big, big screen TV, you can easily watch four games at the same time. And I love doing that. And so it's kind of like a little spin on MLS 360. I like MLS 360. I know people complain about the commercials and all that stuff. If I'm watching MLS 360, it's on in the background. It's not like I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I can't wait to see what... No, that's not... Yeah, it's it's a good while you're on your phone kind of scrolling. But that is actually one of my critiques of MLS 360 is they don't let the games do the talking. And part of me understands that you hire this talent and you have these on-air personalities you know, you want to put them to work. And so a lot of the time is with the banter and kind of the back and forth. But if you're showing the games, you want the games to be the star. And I feel like sometimes with with 360, the games get the backseat. But with multi-view, you know, you can pick one game to like get the audio and focus on and just have everything else kind of going in the background. That's, you know, your your bootleg homemade (laughs) homemade MLS 360 if you're you're not as much into, you know, the personalities. They got a lot of time to fill and I got to give them credit. You know, it is fun, but I feel like, you know, they're almost, you know, spinning too many plates at the same time. Let the games breathe. Let the games do some of the talking. That'd be a little bit of my critique uh, of the 360 issue. Are you ready to talk about Seattle and, and wrap course. this show up? All right, good. Uh, Are we there? We've been an hour, talking for an hour already. Yeah, I know. It feels like it. Uh, LA Galaxy versus Seattle Sounders coming up uh, this Saturday. Uh, Digging Hill Sports Park is where you can find it. April 1st, 2023, 4.30 p.m. is your official quote-unquote TV start time. 4.55 p.m. is your official kickoff time, just in case you were playing that game at home. I actually, I, I had a graphic that actually had that on there and I put the wrong one in here. So that's good. Uh, but I had 4.55 <laughs> p.m. because it's a Fox game. They're giving the 25 minute lead in again, right? So that game will not kick off until basically five minutes before 5 p.m. Uh, just in case you're watching. Fox for free. Apple TV for free. Again, no complaints this weekend. You get to watch it for free. I don't want to hear that MLS is ruining your your viewership because your life. because your life because you <laughs> didn't want to get MLS season pass. Um, all right. Are you ready then, sir? Because I have a feeling that you have a dramatic game preview. I, I do. I'm ready to roll. All right, here you go. Uh, LA Galaxy facing off against the Seattle Sounders coming up on Saturday, April 1st. Here is your dramatic game preview. 
This Saturday, prepare yourself for the Showcase of the Immortals. No, not that one at SoFi Stadium, but the one at Dignity Health Sports Park, as the LA Galaxy face off against Western Conference superstars, the Seattle Sounders. We were told that Douglas Costa will be available, so will we finally have to acknowledge him as our tribal chief, or will it be another case where he says, you can't see me? The Galaxy find themselves as a crossroads as they are looking for their first win of the season. Their form at the end of last season was an American dream. Dream. But at the point of the point collection this season has been nothing less than an American nightmare. If the Galaxy want to get anything out of this match, their own superstars are going to have to step up, like Gaston freaking Brugman and our rated R superstar that R stands for Ricky Pooch. And where will the goals come from? Will Dejan Jovalich come back from his Intercontinental Championship and act like our field general, or will we succumb to the Stanford Giant Jabos? One thing is for certain, this match is going to be an absolute slobber knocker. And if you don't think so, I've got two words for you. Very nice. Very nice. Not going to say the words. I, I, this is good. I've got them is, for you. This is a family show? You, yeah, you're just keeping saying I've got them okay. for you. Okay. Okay. I was, I was glad. I imagine that this is where Josh gets to be a nerd. I uh, imagine those were re- that was a wrestling montage yeah, thing there. I figured yeah. I, I hinted I'm at it. i WrestleMania. Okay. I understand. I understand. That's good. You're you're allowed to be. I just that's not my world, but that's cool. That's your world, right? Like there's I, I forget. Somebody said that uh, that you know on your Twitter feed that you have, if you have a Twitter feed, you should tweet something that like the, you, everybody's sort of known for something on their Twitter, right? Like a lot of us are known for LA Galaxy stuff, right? Mm-hmm. They're like on your Twitter feed at least once a day. You should tweet something that none of your followers are there for, just that way it like rounds you out. So like every once in a while, like if you put out the wrestling stuff, I know there are people who are going to be like all stoked about that, right? And you get it. So <laughs> yeah, and. I- I even have some people saying that those were new references. Those weren't the eighties references. And that's kind of, <laughs> I, I went with the new stuff as I've, I'm an old school fan, but right. I've been getting into it recently because my son's getting into it. So right. I had, I had the new stuff. I had the right. new, the, the new heat ready to roll. So okay, yeah, if you didn't get those, you know, that, that's for the, for the next generation coming, coming up. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. know what I'm talking that, about. That's fine. That's fine. I'm old. I don't need that. Uh, Gary gave us a $5 super chat. says, love the show guys. As always. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. A uh, little shout out. Let's get to this, uh, this game. Uh, Sounders are beaten in nine straight matches against the galaxy. Win five, draw four, and have suffered defeat just once in the last 16 meetings dating back to July 16th. Uh, no team has ever gone unbeaten in 10 straight MLS matches against the galaxy. Never say never. My that's friends, brutal. never say <laughs> that's never. That's a brutal stat. Oh man. Uh, uh, the Galaxy are winless in their first four. For as much as the LA Galaxy, let's just side side those. For as much as the LA Galaxy were dominant over Seattle during those 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 MLS Cup winning years and Bruce Arena and Siggy Schmidt and all that, for as much as they absolutely dominated them in any game that really counted, the Galaxy were always there. Um, it, it has flipped the script on that so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think ever, I yeah. think everybody who's a Galaxy fan is dreads the fact that you had to play Seattle. And if you don't dread it, it's because you simply don't care anymore. Because this is an extremely lopsided sort of um, you know uh, matchup as of recent, right? And so. I don't know, man. Uh, that's a that's a horrible stat. <laughs> yeah, and especially you know I talked about Jordan Morris. He he's been absolutely brutal to the LA Galaxy. I, th- I had I think uh, I, our friend Chris Tucker made a post because Jordan Morris scored something. He said, "Does Dan Stairs play for SKC?" And I he had me for a second. I was like, "Oh yeah, um, that's right." I he just that. absolutely ruined Dan Stairs. You know when he came right. to the diggity. So I, I you know he he's one of those guys where. Obviously, he's he scores <laughs> on other teams as well, but it, he seems to always have it. When he has one of those names when the Galaxy play him, uh, that the, he always gives us fits. Uh, I and and you know I'm a self proclaimed Jordan Morris hater, so like I I am like whatever. Like the four you want to <laughs> you want to show me like an easy time, show me those four goals he scored. Like I feel like I probably could have scored at least two of them. Right. Yeah, and so, well, well, the one thing Leo Chu is the other guy, and I don't even—he's not even one of their regular starters. Leo was he, on fire. He was the one who put those on a platter for him. Oh yeah, he—he he was the one who had the breakout game. Uh, even though it's kind of funny, and this is coming from Jordan Morris haters. Right. The guy with four goals was not the guy with no. the breakout game. Nah, you don't need to pay attention. <laughs> that Jordan Morris, chicken cutlet. That's what I say. Um, let's see. So we had that. Uh, the Galaxy are winless in their first four matches of the season for the fourth time in the post uh, post shootout era. So since 2000, also 2003, 2009, 2020, 2020 is a bad example of that, but we won't dive into that. It is what um, it is. Yeah. LA hasn't lost any of its last eight home matches. Win four, draw four, including playoffs. It's longest unbeaten run in Carson in all competitions since a 10 match run in 2018. 
uh, Zlatan 2018. Um, let's see. Seattle's 4-1 win at Sporting Kansas City on Saturday ended a 10-match winless run away from home. Well, that's good. I'm glad they got that out of the way, right? Yeah. That's, that's... <laughs> well, it's, yeah, they, they got their winless streak on the road out of the way, and then we have our home streak. So what could possibly go wrong? It was only the Sounders' fourth win in their last 27 road games in all competitions. Uh, draw 8, lose 15, dating back to October of 2021. So Sounders, not a great road team as of late. So that's a positive for the LA Galaxy. Uh, and yeah. That takes into account last season when they really put all their eggs in the in the CONCACAF Champions League basket. Right. And so I think that's something to be considered as well. Yeah. Um, so anyway, those those are sort of the stats. There's some other stuff there. You can read it wherever you want to read it. Uh, if we look at all time in the matchup here, uh, the LA Galaxy with 15. Remember how we were talking about uh, last week against um, uh, who did they play against last week? But Portland, uh, how like the series was almost tied up because like they almost had like it was it was really close. Well, this one is tied up. Uh, LA has 15 wins. Seattle has 15 wins. And there are 13 draws between them. That is all you need to know. Uh, the last games, uh, last game that they played against each other was a 3-3 uh, slugfest at home on August 19th of 2022. Uh, I was going to say, I, want, I, I need two more draws. We need 15s across the board. I feel like, wildly. I feel like that's for symmetry's sake. Okay. That, that, yeah, yeah, rooting for a draw now. Uh, again, just the information. There's your kickoff time, 4.55 p.m. Here is the interesting thing for me, and obviously watching last game and sort of going through it, is both of these teams like to have possession. Both of these teams like to build. Both of these teams like to sort of put the ball into spaces, control the to control the the flow of the match, uh, pick out guys, and then try to exploit. Now, here's the difference. Seattle actually has people who can score goals. The LA Galaxy so far do not. Um, it says something that that Kelvin Leardam was goal of the month for last month. Um, they only had two to pick from. Yeah, and Jovalich <laughs> almost missed the goal with his. It bounced in his off is, the goalkeeper. So his is more deflection than shot. Right, yeah, and so. and it was you know there wasn't a lot to that. The Galaxy have a scoring problem. That's where this game is is different. And I don't think that anybody's like, oh well, you know that's not going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue. It has been an issue. The LA Galaxy have not had an offense to speak of, uh, and you're doing it against a team that is very smart, very able to control the play. And I just really want to see what the tug of war here is because both of these teams like to have the ball. Both like to be in control. Does this open up into a more direct fest because of that? Uh, the yeah. Galaxy might benefit from that if they actually tried that, as you've sort of been pointing out. But well, what's the difference here? So someone is going to have to change how they've been playing. That's going to be the interesting thing. So it's going to be who is going to be willing to change. I think with the Galaxy being at home, I feel like you're going to see them possess more and then maybe Seattle's going to be the one trying to spring the counter and playing more direct to kind of steal the point. So that's how I see it. I see it going. I see the galaxy holding more possession in this game and, and the Sounders kind of playing counter to that. Interesting thing that keeps popping up in the chat with all the draws that we've had, would you consider a draw against Seattle a success? I, I am I am of the mind that any points you pick up right now while this team is still coming together is points that you're going to be happy that you have down the road. So I I won't be upset. I won't be angry. I won't be like, oh, well, that sucks. They got another draw. If it's a 0-0 game, the defense is doing its job against an offense that no one yeah. has to score goals. So if, if they can limit Seattle in chances and limit them in scoring opportunities, and hopefully because Seattle just... just got their win on the road that you know the it's sort of my roulette thing you know i've always said yeah. it comes up black 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 well it just yeah. came up red so what are the chances it's going to be red again is it going to be red or is it going to be black did they learn something from beating skc besides the fact that skc was got run over um, yeah and there was also a red card in that game can we please be very clear red card <laughs> it was two to one when the red card happened and then it ends four to one uh, Sporting Kansas City scored first, by the way. Seattle scored four unanswered. I'm not saying Seattle's not a team that you have to take very seriously because I think they matched up against LAFC at home really well. Um, but at the same time, I don't believe that Seattle is in any way, shape, or form unbeatable at this point. Uh, my concern is where the goals are going to come from, and I don't know that we have yeah. an answer for that. Yeah, th that's my concern. That's why it's interesting. I think if you got a draw, you take every other game out you you cover up all the results and you say I draw it home against Seattle oh, that's not too bad but I think just given the circumstances you'd be kind of bummed that 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 win hasn't hasn't come along so uh, I'm with you that you know Seattle maybe isn't as scary uh, <laughs> as as they're made out to be but at the same time I have the very same concerns I don't know where these goals are going to come from and if Seattle's feeling themselves Jordan Morris you know is on top of the world he's the one who scored you know seven out of their nine goals I think that they've scored he's scored 
you know, a big bunch of them. Yeah, they have 10 goals, and Jordan Morris has scored seven of them. So he, he's riding a hot streak to open the season. So that's what makes me nervous. Uh, I, I, again, I'm, I can't say that I'm super hopeful going to this game. If they could steal a point, I understand why people would be happy with that, as disappointing as it would be that for them not to get their first win. I mean, you know, you go through some of these names. A lot of these names are galaxy killer names, right? Uh, Jordan Morris, uh, Nico Rui Ladero. Diaz. Yeah, Rui Diaz, uh, a, a Rusnak, right? Um, you have Roldan on the outside. Yamar is in there as well. Uh, a, a Stephen Fry. Now, I will say in the Sporting Kansas City game, the goal that they gave up was a, was a Stephen Fry mistake. Uh, he's not unbeatable, and and he's just a very solid goalkeeper who normally doesn't make mistakes. But he did make mistake in that SKC game that didn't end up costing him. So, um, but I and yeah. I will say that they have three clean sheets out of their five games. So that is, you they know, have, they have a good. Defense. He's not. He's not nothing. No, no, no. He's he's absolutely strong. Uh, looking at their passing chart, I thought was really interesting in Sporting Kansas City. So strong through the middle. Uh, shifted to the left hand side. That's where uh, that was shifted to Sporting Kansas City's right side. They were exploiting Graham Zusi on that side, uh, and Leo was was just, Leo Chu was just running right through people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is this is a team that likes I think central attack. Like you can see that they like the intricate passing. They like to run down the middle. Um, and when you have Rusnak and you have Ladero and you have Jordan Morris and you have uh, Leo Chu sort of following coming out to the outside side or, or doing that stuff, you can see where they get a lot of strength in there. Now, the interesting thing, obviously, is that to counter with the LA Galaxy is that the Galaxy's strongest position is also down the middle, right? And so with yeah. with um, with Ricky Pooj and Gaston Brugman, who Gaston Brugman has absolutely been one of the best players this year on the LA Galaxy. Uh, Ricky Pooj had, I saw a stat, I think Alex Ruiz tweeted it out. Ricky Pooj has had uh, more passes into the box than any other Galaxy player. So he has seven, but he's also been dispossessed the most. Uh, yeah. And he's also ha- lost the ball the most in the middle, but not necessarily his fault all the time. They well, t- they tend to pass it to him when there's seven guys around them too. And that shows that he's working. You yep. know, in order to lose the ball, you have to have the ball. So it's just one of those things. Interesting with the passing breakdown network that you brought up for Seattle. I thought that was a bit of an outlier because of you know all the in. Uh, international breaks and injuries, things that they have, that's actually not normally how they play that they exploited. Like you said that you, if you brought up uh, the passing network from previous games from them, they're much more down the middle. So you're right. This, this game is going to be kind of those battle of the midfields. Your your two most intricate teams. So it is going to be interesting to see how it breaks. They're going to pass each other to death. <laughs> it's, Do you it's, have the five thirty eight? Uh, I of course I have five. How dare you, sir? Uh, I, would just, I have a funny stat on that too. Okay, I would just like to tell everybody five thirty eight still has the LA Galaxy as one of the top Western Conference teams. As a matter of fact, they have them as the third best Western Conference team behind LAFC, behind Seattle. Um, then it's the LA Galaxy on that. Uh, FC Dallas right below them. Uh, St. Louis has not quite crept up into the 538 uh, rankings as of yet, and um, nor should they. Uh, just to just to tell everybody. I mean, I, I like to be a hater on things. I love watching St. Louis. I love watching what they're doing. I want to go to that stadium. I want to do all those things. Um, but some of this stuff that's been happening has been just kind of, you're like, come on. Yeah. It's going to turn into a pumpkin at some point. I love, there was a big argument about whether or not they, 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 they high pressed in order to get the ball. No, they didn't high press. The guy <laughs> passed him the ball. He was Conquer, there. He, he was, was a right forward there. and he was a forward in a forward position. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's go to five thirty eight Now, as we look at matches and maybe people will be surprised. I was a little surprised yeah myself uh, as well 45 percent chance to win for the la galaxy 29 percent chance to win for seattle and a 26 percent chance to draw i mean if i'm a betting person and i look at sort of how the bets <laughs> did you did you see what they were on in terms yeah. of the line what is it i, I did i looked at bovada and I, I this is where my recommendation to you again i'm not a financial advisor right but but i play the one galaxy on are favored in this game uh if you seattle is plus 225 so if you have been watching the galaxy hammer the Seattle bet. <laughs> and if the galaxy win, you're happy because the galaxy won. They got a, a three points. They're in the win column. But if they lose, you just made yourself 225 bucks for every hundred that you bet. So, you know, th- you, that can maybe, you know, moisten your tears with your dollar bills there. That's, that's your other way around it. So, you know, galaxy plus plus one fifteen. Sounders plus 225. If, if I were a betting person, I'd bet that Seattle, oh, so <laughs> that some, Seattle result. Somebody got Seattle at plus 300. Wow. That yeah, take that all day long. Um that that concludes the betting portion of our show today. Um all right, I'm going to go first <laughs> this time cuz I rarely go first on my on my predictions. So people oh, think one, yeah. Bef- yes, before go you go. Yes. 538. Funny thing. Last week I was touting that 538, hey, they're right most of the time, so people who give us a hard time. Last week, 
they went two for 14, 14%. <laughs> they only had two correct guesses. So, okay, okay, if you have your critiques, you're right. But last week was it kind of a wacky out. week because yeah. of the international break. Last week was a really weird a really weird MLS week. I, I did. I, I've never. I've never said this. I did some work as a consultant for uh, for a company that that basically bets. Right. It wasn't like I was making bets. I was just. I would fill in information and that type of thing. Um, and it was crazy to me because sometimes they just wouldn't bet. They would be like, "No, there's not enough information." Like it would have been that last weekend. If you're yeah. if you're an MLS fan, if you're fig- you're like we're not betting on that. There's not enough yeah. information with all of the international absences and things that are going on. You don't these are not normal teams that are coming out there, so they don't follow like this normal trend. Everybody's back. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, now now can I get my prediction? Yeah, we're ready. All right, guaranteed to be wrong prediction. Guaranteed to be wrong prediction. Oh, I'm really on the. I'm, I really want to say one one is a draw. And and then I want then like there's even a part of me that says you know the galaxy can steal this one it just feels like it's one of those that I steal. hate it I so, hate it here uh, yeah um, <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying it's one one I'm gonna say one okay. one draw uh, I'm I'm not feeling good about it Jordan okay. Morris scares me Rui Diaz scares me mm-hmm. them coming on a hot streak the galaxy still not figuring it all out I still don't know where the goals are gonna come from right maybe they get one to bounce off someone's shin yeah I I, I could see them losing three one okay I think this is this is gonna go poorly for the galaxy it was funny going back to that goal of the month it's like when goal of the month came out they should say just double it and give it to the next person we, <laughs> we, we don't want it yeah pass it on <laughs> Kelvin's like you know I'm good I'm good I don't yeah. I don't I don't want that one uh so it's, it's always good all right um I think that's it. LA Galaxy play against the Seattle Sounders coming up this weekend. Uh, again, 4.30 p.m. is your TV start time. 4.55 p.m. is your kickoff time. April 1st, 2023, Dignity Hill Sports Park. We'll see you there, or we'll see you uh, at any of the watch parties that are going on uh, so you can watch your LA Galaxy play uh, Seattle. Uh, anything else, Eric, that you want to throw in? Yeah. yeah. I did have our, our friends from Liga G reached out, wanted me to give them a quick little plug. Liga G is holding a Gold Cup tournament. Uh, registration does close next week. So if you're interested, you have a PS5, you're interested in getting in FIFA and kind of playing in Liga G, this is the way to kind of get in it. You know, the league's about to start their 11th season. And if you want to kind of soft launch yourself into it, we do get questions sometimes. How do I join? find a team? Where do I join? This, you get drafted into a random team. You can find some people who you kind of vibe with and make connections. And then this is where you kind of, this is your entryway <laughs> into Liga G. This is how gotcha. Liga G started. Right. started with Cosmo SC parties and people eventually getting paired up and then formed their own teams and the kind of the rest is history. So if you're interested in, in PS5 and FIFA and gaming, check out Liga G. That's at Liga underscore G96. They're having a little open tournament, inviting everyone who's interested. If you're just curious, go ahead and check them out. All right. Very good. Liga G. Uh, I feel like Liga G should have like a... <laughs> you know, like like one yeah, of those type thing. Yeah, it feels it feels that way. I but they're they're great over there, and I retweet all the stuff I can. We got to call that game that one time, and that, that was, was the best. That was one that of was my that's one of my favorite like uh, uh, COVID memories. Right? Was that during COVID? I feel like it was yeah. still during COVID. Right? Yeah. Well, that Liga G at its height right. was during COVID with everyone at home. It's that's it's right. you know just everyone kind of got back to normal. But yeah, at its height, that's what it was. Us announcing the game, everyone at home. I think there were ten teams in the league. Liga G is a fun time. Uh, big shout out. Thanks for to Steve for, for coming on uh, the show with AFCHA. Again, if you're in the stadium, check out that truck. Buy your pupusas. Remember, that money goes to a great cause. Um, and then um, did anybody else notice the absence of something? That, that's right. The absence of a completely crashed internet tonight. We did it, Joe. We I, did it. <laughs> every time. Every time you send that to me like once a week and I just, it, every time I, 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 I crack up. So, um, but Hey, we'll see if that main, this could be an outlier. Let's not celebrate yet. Right. Don't count your goals before they happen, especially with the LA galaxy, because you have no offense. Um, you know, that's so, so we're feeling positive there. Big shout out to one of my listeners. You know who you are. Uh, I'm not going to say your name. Yeah. Don't get fired. <laughs> yeah. Don't get fired. Uh, but thank you for that. Um, and hopefully this fixed everything. All right, there we go. All right, Eric, Tell people where they can find you. Let's get on out of here. All right. You can find me at, at Hammer EV on everything. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. That's Hammer EV and the number nine. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N. And of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Corner of the Galaxy is where you can find all of our wonderful uh, shows uh, and any of the writings that we have, we put up there as well. All right. For Eric, the Portuguese Hammer, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening. You've been watching to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, 
Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.